kind of move it a little bit off my work grid. And I use this to uh, sample colors. So you can see the scene is basically you're, you're standing on a, on a roadway. There's a little bridge right here, one of these old stone bridges over a river running under there. And uh, you're sort of seeing the road extend and the, the sort of hills uh, atmospherically fog out. <clears throat> and the light source is generally, uh, uh, the direction of the light source is really important. It's in Quill as well. Um, and it's coming from, you know, you're sort of backlit. So it's coming from in front of you. So I'll do what Goro does. I'll actually draw it in my my scratch paint layer. Let's call it temp. And in temp, I'm just going to draw my cone of uh, my light direction. So basically, my light direction is going to be something like this. Right? So it's sort of coming in this direction right here. And that's important to keep in mind in Quill. Um, okay. So I'll start by making a um, a sky dome because what I want to really do is capture the time of day first. And before I even do a dome, I'll just pick a, a sky color. And it's, let's try that. Okay. So we want to be somewhere in this range for our sky color. Um, and then what I like to do next is make a <clears throat> a floor. So I like to turn on wireframe so I can see what I'm doing and um, I start by just using some flat planes and I want to sort of pick a nice uh, grass green basically because what I'm going to do is make all of the flat floor uh, and I just kind of make a stroke put it on the cardinal axes and duplicate it a bunch of times because I don't really care <clears throat> to be artistic at this point, I'm trying to get a lot of colors down. Um, so the first thing I'm just going to do is throw down a flat, big grid of green. And I will uh, sort of start thinking about this scene. So I'm going to put my viewpoint right where it is in the painting. And I'm on the roadway. So basically, I'll do that first. I'll go down. Uh, create a new spawn point, call it road, Oops, roadway, okay, and then um, reset that transform. Now I know it's on the grid, and I'll move it around until I kind of have about where I want to be um, on the floor and I want to be sort of in the center. Okay, so that's good. Uh, let's jump to it. I'll stand up and reset my pivot. Okay. Oops. There we go. So what I really want just to position myself. Oops. Um, let's jump to it. So, up, 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 up. all right. So let's raise this up. And let's go in here, let's do floor level, it's easier. Um, reset, floor level, okay. We wanna be about this big in the scene. Okay, so now we are, you know, standing on a big wide, I don't know, 50 by 50 foot plane. Um, 
that scene implies a lot more than 50 feet. So like way out there are going to be the mountains. Um, so you are thinking, if you want to reconstruct a painting, you kind of have to think backwards from where you started. I was looking at a real scene. It was three-dimensional. I reduced it to a flat plane. Now I'm going to work backwards. I'm going to decompress that or uh, uncompress it, basically, uh, back to what it was. Um, <clears throat> okay, so I can hide. And that requires, you know, like logically thinking about what all those decisions meant, what I did there. Uh, okay, so that's my roadway. I mean, that's my viewpoint. Now I can think about, well, there was a bridge over here. So I'm going to start by going in here and creating a new paint layer and calling it a bridge. Okay. And let's just get this guy around so we can kind of have a point of reference. So bridge, I like to just kind of draw a couple of things. So what I do is I generally work with um a cube brush and I'll pick like, you know. Just go in here and actually pick some of these colors. So, um, I like to draw on the grid if possible, just because it, if it's arbitrary and it doesn't matter, uh, then it's easier to draw on the grid. If it matters to be off the grid, then draw off the grid. But sometimes it doesn't matter, and then you're drawing off the grid for no reason. And it's like, why? You know, when you can make your life a lot easier by utilizing the cardinal axis system. If your stuff is off, skewed off, you, you, there's a lot of things you can't do. So, for example, I could take this and the pivots already aligned nicely. I know these two are parallel to each other, um, which is what I want for that bridge. So I want to just kind of create the stone placement for that. And then I'm going to think about this tree shape over here. <clears throat> now, the other thing is the roadway. So let's 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 go ahead and create the roadway. So sample that color. Doesn't really matter that we're accurate right now. And the other thing I want to try and do is uh, again use only the gizmo, this this thing to move my. my tiles around. So what I just did there was a, a redo of a slight offset. So I, I created the tile, duplicated it once, rotated it slightly, and then did a redo, which is right joystick flick instead of left for undo. And it just repeated that action. And that's how you construct a lot of things quickly. Um, and what I want is just kind of a winding road that goes off in the distance, right? So I'm just going to Something like this. I know these are all on the same axes because I'm only using this to move them around. So there you go. That's how you avoid a lot of weird, messy gaps. Um, okay. Let's just kind of do this. Oops. Technically, I wanted to put that on a different layer, but whatever. It's no big deal. Okay. So something like like this probably i think makes sense and we can correct the scale later i think i want to be smaller that'll make my life a lot easier so let's be about this big because if you think about it this roadway takes two cars so i'm actually about this big okay cool um, jump. There we go. Feels kind of right. Good enough. Okay, so so let's zoom out. I kind of leave this guy here visible because it, it's a human reference. Kind of helps. All right, now I'm going to do these two tree masses because they're pretty important. And for now, I'm only concerned with 
volume, shape, and color. So I'm just going to use a giant uh, sphere or something. Go sample something out of that shadow color. And it looks like it's out here. It's like past the bridge. So it's about, you know, oops. I want to be in a layer I can paint. So bridge. Let me go ahead and separate this already. Um, so here's one thing. You've already got bridge and roadway in, in the same layer. Just select the roadway. And then go to move to a new layer. And that'll leave bridge where it was. Road is now road. Bridge is bridge. And now I'm going to create another new layer called um, tree. Big. Okay, so I'll have other stuff too. And temp, I want to get my uh, floor out of temp. So I'm going to select all that. Move to a new layer, call that. Uh, grass okay so now what i can do is in what i also want to capture is the 3d nature of this terrain right so like there's a bridge meaning that there's a creek under here and that was the whole point of building this stone bridge which is actually about 100 years old pretty cool historic little bridge so what you'll do is there's this grassy field and I want to kind of dig a ditch in it. So I'm just going to like grab this row of polys. It's the easiest thing. And bring them down. You know, about like six feet or so. And uh, at this point, you can hide the grid if you want. And then I'll just select these and then holding left. Uh, you know, alt trigger, duplicate that while rotating. I've just created the banks of the river. And I'm doing this very mechanically right now, but you can easily add a lot of organic feel to it later. Right now, I just care about the structure. All right, cool. And now I can actually do a, like a grab tool. Um, And I can sort of, you know, move parts of the terrain like this if I wanted to. Like I can, you know, move the banks of the river a little bit here, here. It's okay to have these gaps at this point. It doesn't really matter. Because I want the grass to be a little shaped. Oops. Okay. Cool. And then you can also just use thick and thin to widen up you know this stuff or thin it out so like that's one way really just fattening those and there you go pretty pretty decent does a pretty good job okay so now i've got like this kind of curvy bank which is cool um, and I like to start shading some of that so I can see what I'm doing. So I'll like, you know, do something like, okay, lights coming from here, obviously this bank. And this is the same thing, same decisions I make when I paint, except I have the model in front of me, the actual thing here. I have, oops, I have, uh, only the uh, painting, so. I hide the axes so I can um, easily deselect. Oh, I see what's going on. Sorry, it's unfortunately sometimes it's really hard to select things or deselect things. Okay, sure I don't get any of that. And then I'll just go in here and, you know, pick that color, go a little bit darker, and just paint the dark bank in. Okay, cool. And I personally like those intersections, so I like to leave things like that. Um, then you can sort of just organically dust some around here, since the riverbed is going to be darker. 
Now I can start to see what I'm looking at. Uh, let's do that tree. Okay. So tree's big. So let's go in here and like, yeah, just kind of mass a big tree up. Right. Um, and I like to get the colors right. And I like to get the forms right. So it's like, you know, this feels kind of like this. And it has a few of these. Cluster here. Cluster there. Let's see. Probably comes towards me a little bit. I'm capturing a little bit of the feel of this um, tree. Okay. It's pretty good. Um, and then I, I optimize because I personally think it looks fine when it's optimized. Looks cool. Because you can also, you know, anything that looks weird, just move it and rotate it till it doesn't. And sometimes it's a matter of selecting, duping, and scaling. Same thing. Which is kind of what nature does. That's what a fractal pattern really is, right? So, um, okay, good enough. I'm kind of just trying to get the character of that tree, not too worried about it. <clears throat> okay. And once you get it and you're pretty satisfied with that feel of that tree or whatever it is, um, depends how stylized you want to be too, really. Because I've done really simple trees. Then I will grab that mass. Kind of scale it appropriately, and then when I'm happy with it, I will turn on the axes and duplicate it and move it backwards and offset it in the direction of the light and then paint it with the light color. That'll right away give you a, um, a sense of light, right? And it doesn't really matter what color. Just pick any color from your selection. Okay. And it's a rim light, right? So it's kind of something like that. And then what you can do once you've embedded these two is just go in and kind of soften those edges if you want. Which sometimes I don't do. You know, sometimes I... But there is some bounced light in there. So I might grab some of these lighter greens and just go in here and... And basically mimic what I've done in there. And then go back and forth. This... And that's pretty good for now. I can, I definitely do more, but until I start getting everything else in, you can't tell if your colors are correct or your values are correct. Uh, so move on. So next is this mass over here. For that, I'm going to grab the same tree, cluster it, duplicate it, and move it over here because it's on the other side and in front of the, probably actually over here, right? Something like Something like it's kind of growing half in the river. And this one actually is way off. Actually, it's more like over here. Okay, so you're sort of, yeah. And this goes like this. Let's just do some cool shapes here. Okay, okay, good enough. Um, this is also darker, as you can see in the painting. So I'll, maybe it has a little more purple in it too, which is kind of cool. I'll go ahead and do that. Let me make sure I get yeah, appropriate colors here. Because it's closer to you, so it's a little more saturated. Um, maybe not that saturated though. And then there's always this notion that, you know, if that's shade, this stuff is not made from some glowing material. It's going to be at least the same value, if not uh, if not, you know, at least sort of close in um, hue, but not necessarily, but at least the same value. 
of brightness that is. And that'll make it sort of look like it's sitting more in the terrain. Okay, so there's that. Same for this guy. And give him a little grounding shadow, right? And you don't want to do it in the direction of your light. And keep all that pretty clean. And this also wants to stay pretty bright. Otherwise, you're going to lose your sense of light. Okay. So if you're facing light, it's going to look something like this. And if you're facing where I was, something like this. And now I'm going to pop in these hills because these are important to get that atmospheric shade right. So <clears throat> basically, for that, I like to use boxes because they're volumetric. And I just sample that color, sort of the base color of that hill. Something like, yeah, that's pretty close. And if you think about it, what is it doing? It's going... It's going way out there, and it's, you know, something like, uh, something like that, maybe? Okay, so that's something. And then I'll grab some flat planes. And again, just like the same way I paint, I like to put in flat, nice flat strokes um, because it's efficient, but also because I like the look. It's kind of how I paint. And in, in a lot of ways, it's the way nature breaks things up. We, we, we think we see a lot more curves than we do. Um, I think really a lot of things can be more easily visualized in flat planes. So, okay, so there we go. Um, and I'm just trying to get the tone right, the atmospherics right there. So I also see, like, the other thing I'll do is for these pine trees, you know, you do have some of these poking through. So I'll make a couple and just dupe them around, which is cool. And this is where 3D really helps. Um, some of them are this color. And then just, yeah, duplicate. And I'm not going crazy yet. I'm just trying to get a sense of, like, the right colors and stuff. Okay, so that's good. Uh, let's move um, this out of the way. Let's make it a lot bigger too. Okay. So something like this, and now let's check our viewpoint. Okay, so yeah, not bad. We're pretty good, but I'd say like. The stone bridge wants to be higher, and I think uh, that tree is obviously too far off. So let's just move it. And right now I'm selecting, uh, I have selected all visible unlocked layers on, which means I can just select through anything, which is cool. But if I don't want to, I can have this on and easily select anything in my scene turn this off and it'll take me to that layer which is kind of convenient when you have a lot of layers um so now i'm just going to move the tree and I, it's more like this um yeah i think this guy too can probably move And the other thing with this one, <clears throat> this tree is closer to me, so I'm going to actually scale down and use more of these little leaf clusters, um, but I'll, I'll vary them. Because 
it's kind of what you see. It's the way I've painted it too. Like there's more detail to the leaves up close, these guys up here that you see. So I might even put in some things that look like leaves actually. Um, because, you know, because you're going to actually be close enough to see it. And again, this is where Quill is just so nice, because once you make one cluster, it's so easy to duplicate that and like instantly create detail. Now it's costly. I'm going to get even more detailed as I get close to you. But I'm still well within a quest budget right now, even. Um, I'm going to darken. And you can, you know, after you construct this, you can go in and just paint it over it again. So it's not like you can't. Um, but, you know, it's cool to show some light poking through here and there, too. So, you know, you can noodle this to death. Um, And that's just as simple as little things like this, yeah. Um, and then going in and sampling that color and dusting it around. And now it looks like there's light poking through there. It's the same thing you do with the paint, honestly. It's just that you're doing it with vertex coloring here. Let's unify this a little bit more too. Um, all right. That's pretty good. Now I'm going to start putting in some of these hedge trees over here. Uh, this also means my ground needs to go way further back. If my hill is back here. So let's go to grass. Select a bunch of this ground and just add more. And then as it recedes, it'll fog just like this grass will. So I'm going to actually color it a similar color but maybe a little a little different so that when i'm down here i get a sense of atmospherics um that's good enough really and then what i'm going to do is create that distant mountainscape by pretty much oh you know what i did that in the uh trees big didn't i yeah, let's move this to mountains. I forgot to do that. So, move to new layer, all this. Mountains. And um, let's just duplicate this. And I'm going to raise it up and scale it. And then I'm going to just take parts of it and duplicate and sort of patchwork them down to roughly the same mountain range. So there you go. I just want to create this. The silhouette I see there is more broken up. And the, what's nice about what that does for you is it implies distance. That's a further away version of this close up one because you see more frequency. It's like the same thing, smaller. So it makes sense to your eye. Um, okay, and then you want to take all these little trees you did just the trees and reduce them so now they are much supposedly much further away. And I'm going to just break up the silhouette a little bit more, like I did in the painting very much. And then I will do a color pass at the very end. All right. And let's go in. And now we're going to sample this blue. And we're going to dust that back here to get started. All right. And we're going to, actually, it's a little, a little deeper down here. And a little more dark and saturated down there. Good enough. And then, oops. And you can do things like, you know, only select this so that you can 
paint it cleanly without worrying about it. And I like the different variations in tone. Like, that doesn't bother me. It helps it look cool. You know, ver like, very much how I paint. And I'll mix and match. I'll select some, blend them, whatever. So I like it. Okay. And then, the very distant stuff here, maybe. And, you know, you don't have to be crazy about this, really. It's all by what looks right. It's going to be that color. Maybe a little like that's where you see some light bouncing. So remember, light's coming here. So you're gonna get a little bit of rim light on these on these hills here. And all these kind of nice highlights that I did in the painting, I can recreate that in Quill in a nice way. But it's you know you do that later. You first you want to get the basic colors down. Um, and I'll show you how to do that. So, okay, so we got that. That's pretty close, I think, to what I was trying to capture with this feel, right? So now, go back down to roadway and sort of evaluate that. And it's like, yeah, not bad. It's starting to feel like I am there. And I, I wanna say I'm actually closer to the bridge. And even smaller. So uh, I'm going to do that for myself. Um, I am actually this big. I am here, probably. It's pretty close to where I was in real life. Okay. Yeah, that feels better. That feels better, right? That's pretty much the same 3D scene perspective and scale recreated in Quill. Now I can reliably know everything's kind of in the right place and my atmospheric colors are basically set and I can kind of have a little more fun with it, you know, and paint. Because um, the other thing I like to capture is this idea of the shadow going across this road. So you're in a shadow of this giant tree. And that the way I like to do that is I'll go to roadway and I'll paint my highlight color. So I will pick a really nice bright. Color and then. Kind of dust it in there and then I will. Just use flat strokes with the shade color to kind of do my shadow because for one, it's editable. For two, it's not based on uh, how many vertices your floor has. Um, and it's also has a, a style to it that I really like. And again, it's more or less the way I paint in real life. So. You know, I like to paint with a lot of broad strokes, flat strokes. And so Quill really does a great job for me of mimicking that. Um, so like, yeah, that sense right there, that's really what I wanted to capture, right? I wanted to capture that sense that you're, oh, you're in this shadow of this tree. So, and those light gaps are great. I leave those. Um, and that's why I, I do it that way rather than just coloring the road. And I'll do some of that as well. So I'll do a little coloring of the road and a little shadows using actual strokes. Um, and you can mix and match. You know, you can do this, which is great. And that gets you the blend that you really want, I think. Um, because you can also mix other colors. So I can bring in a little bit of, you know, like, I don't know, peach to this. Or pink. Um, and then peach. That's like a bounce light. So I can do all sorts of things that I 
just like I could in real life uh, in, in the oil with Quill, which is really wonderful. And it's all based on how many verts you've got. So I kind of like that. Um, I don't really care that this is accurate. Oops. What I more care about is that the lighting is correct. So this still feels kind of too dark. So I'm going to actually go back in here. And what am I doing? Here we go. Um, just want to dust a little bit of that color on there. Not a lot. Oops. Just to brighten it a tiny bit. There we go. It was a little bit better. And so what's happening is the river is kind of running through here, which is great. So you'll also have some more shade here. So I as well color all this too. It's all nice and dark. Um, darken this bridge. And then there's some cool spots of light on the bridge. I'll do that the same way. And then with the opposite sort of feel. You know, if there's some... Um, like a block of light on that bridge. I'll just do this. Oh, it's turned around. Okay. I'm like, where's my tracking? There we go. Stuff like that. Um, And you know, you can go crazy with this too. But to me, it's just fun to play with the shapes here. Otherwise, you could definitely do it in different ways, but I, I kind of like the way that this breaks it up. Um, and you will want to make sure these line up naturally. Okay, cool. And then I want this all to be, well, I guess I could do it with flat planes like that. And these are actually kind of reflecting a sky color, so I'm going to go a little blue, a little green blue on that. Cool. And, you know, you can always go back with the darks and just get darker. And that's you know more preferable, I think, because now you got you have a broader range of color, which is nice. Um, so your shadow's just a hair darker here, but not much, like too much of that, and it looks weird. So I like to actually go in and reblend that a little bit with this color again. Right, so you're blending everything constantly, which is nice. Um, with this stuff, I love the little details. To me, it makes a difference. So I'll go in, and what I notice is there's highlights on the top. You do have some it's your top surfaces, and there's that like little bit of shade under there. So. You know, and maybe it's really this color. I want to sample one of these. Maybe that's too bright. Yeah, these are way too dark. And that's just like, you know, really fun to just hand draw. And it gives it a really cool feeling of light, lighting, and at the same time, a really cool feeling of um, something that's hand drawn in real life, you know, illustrated basically. 
And I'll do the same. This is a little too harsh, so I'll kind of go in and just kind of blend all that a little bit with that shadow color. And I want to kind of kick that into the shadow as well, just a bit. Cool. Good enough. And that is the stuff that is very hard to do in a 3D program, I'll tell you the truth. Um, when you see this sort of Z fighting that happens sometimes, I just use the nudge on very low, just tap it. It's fine. Um, okay. So now I'm going to do the, uh, and then off in the distance too, I think there's like shade on this road here, basically from this mountain. So we're going to get that as well. And that just means all of this is kind of shaded the same way. Uh, sorry. Okay, cool. So that's that. And one thing I like is how that ridge line is is like a dark blue and behind it is light. So I want to make sure to get that. So I'm going to go back over here, grab one of these, bring it up and break up that silhouette a little bit better. Okay. I want to paint it. With that color, probably a little darker. Yeah. And then what I want is for this to be the lighter color. And I want all of this also to be that light color. Kind of evenly. Let's just kill that for now. That's better. Uh, yeah. And I can just duplicate that a little bit. trees grow straight cool and then to capture some of these highlight shapes I'll just draw it just like I said with a nice sort of a bright stroke I kind of want to give it a little more yellow because I want it to really look like it's Blowing. And that's where you can just kind of have fun. So we get it a little bit there too. All right? And then if it's too strong, it's easy to just kind of blend by doing that. That's good enough. To fill two. <sighs> Great. A little stronger than the painting, but that's not a bad thing. Um, the other thing I like to get is those light poles out there, which are pretty cool. Oh, and then this is casting a shadow as well. Remember? And you got, and then the other thing that's cool is these trees over here, these like bushes that are kind of lining. So that's really simple. I just grab a part of this and construct one of them. Go in there and sort of paint it. And then just, you know, duplicate until I mass out. 
and then further back they go, they kind of brighten up. Also, some of these are, you can also use Dodge to get them to just be additively bright, right? And then maybe move an entire cluster out here. And for that one, you just want to add a little Dodge and maybe a little up, 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 blue. Because they're further away. Um, same again. Yeah. And then, like, you know, back here, too, there was some low-lying ground cover bushes, whatnot. And those can just kind of help break up the terrain. And for those, I, I really just do a lot of repetition and then kind of give it a color tint because really you are tinting, you know, these are more, more or less in a shaded uh, shadow of this tree. So something like that. And then, you know, every once in a while, oops, you can really make something look like it's getting a lot of light, just like in that painting, which is really nice. And just making a cluster, selecting it, and then you know, doing something like that. And what's cool is, you know, often with that stuff, there are parts of this bush that are just backlit. Oops. So you don't always get all of that, but you get some of it. You kind of want to look and study the painting itself to see how it's done. But essentially, you know, you're trying to recreate what you see. Um, so it's kind of spilling over here. Going there is fine. Okay, cool. Oops. Um, like this is probably just too dark. There we go. Cool, cool, cool. And we can kind of just copy that sometimes into different parts of this tree. It's essentially the same thing. And this is where you just are kind of having fun with quill, honestly. Intersecting and whatnot. Because as they intersect, it kind of does what it does in nature. You know, you're thinking about the direction of the light and what it would what it would actually really do. Because so what's cool is, you know, you could go to the other side and it would be correct. Or at least close to correct. Okay, so that is that, and then pause this.